Hello and welcome to Sistran Translation Technologies. In this quick demonstration, we'd like to show you how you can use Sistran Enterprise Server to translate content from one language to another. There are many languages to choose from and there are several categories of tools that you could use. Here are four essential tool categories. The first tool set is through your web browser. We also call this the online tool, but don't be misled. This does not mean that you have to be online or on the internet. The translations can occur safely on premise behind your network's firewall. The second category is a collection of tools that you can optionally install on your Windows desktop or laptop. These are called application clients, consisting of user tools for day-to-day -day translation activities, such as toolbars for applications from MS Office, or emails in MS Outlook, a translation plugin for multilingual chat in Skype for business, a quick file translation tool, an interactive translator with dictionary lookup, and keyboard shortcuts to translate just about anything that you can select or highlight, no matter which application you are using. For the third category, you can also make use of several API solutions such as REST or SOAP to integrate or add machine translation to your own application. This may require a special version of the Enterprise Server License, but when you have it, this opens many new possibilities for how and where you can offer translation. We have in fact taken that feature into a fourth category, with a number of popular places where machine translation is in high and growing demand. These are accessible through plugins that you can obtain from Sistran or third-party partner companies. For example, these plugins include a translation solution for eDiscovery with Kekura Relativity, or Sistran integration into SDL Trado Studio, SDL TMS, and SDL World Server, as well as Adobe Experience Manager, or AEM, and even Oracle Service Cloud. Now let's have a look at the first of these four categories, the translation tools that you can easily access through your web browser. Okay, so let's have a look at how and what you can translate when using the web browser interface. There are three main categories to choose from, text translation, file translation and web translation. And there is also an optional speech translation feature depending on your license. First, a few words about text translation. This will be used for short pieces of text that you manually enter and type or that you copy and paste from another window. Think of using this for a few dozen or maybe up to a few hundred lines of text. Next, file translation. This will be what you want to use when you have text in a file and perhaps some very large files. The default size limit is currently 50 megabytes. The Sistran Enterprise Server supports many file formats, including, of course, plain text, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, OpenOffice, HTML, and quite a few more. Next is web translation. There are tools to view a web page and have it translated. This could be pages on the World Wide Web, or it could be for pages in a knowledge base on your intranet behind your firewall. There is one more possible option, but it requires an optional module from a company named Vocapia to perform transcriptions of audio files such as WAV or MP3. You may then also see an option for speech translation. This really does two things in one. It does both the transcription from audio format to text format and then also the translation of that text. The request for speech translation will thus return both a transcription as well as its translation. Okay, so here's a closer look at translating text. Let's get ready to type some text in English. In this example, we know already what the source language is. We can thus specify the known source and the desired target language. As a result, the system will also show us multiple available profiles for the chosen combination of source and target. This defines the language pair, or LP. This is also your opportunity to control the outcome of the translation by selecting a proper profile. The web browser we used in this example is Internet Explorer. We simply type to enter the text manually. If you pause for a short while, it starts the translation. You can also use the Translate button. 
After translation, you may see alternate meanings on the right side. These come from the Sistran dictionaries and possibly your own user dictionaries, if any were created and used in the profile. While reviewing the translation and selecting some words, you may also see an option to submit a suggestion for better translation, which will help you communicate with the linguistic team in your organization. This may be used by your designated staff members who will want to review the suggestions on a regular basis, perhaps in order to help improve the translation quality where needed. Suggestions can be added to user dictionaries and translation memories, to name a few. Here is another example, this time with the Google Chrome browser. In this case, we left the source language undefined for auto detection and only set the target language. No profile was selectable. That's because the system doesn't know yet what the source language is. In this case, we selected, copied and pasted the text from another application's window. It will wait for you to enter your text. Then it will be able to analyze it for automatic language identification, or LID. Hit the translate button and you'll soon see it translated in your desired language. Notice that in some browsers, such as this one, you may be able to hear the translated text by clicking on the speaker icon. The browser will then read it to you. Keep in mind, you can do this from many environments where you can run a web browser, a PC running Windows from Microsoft, or a Mac running Apple's Mac OS, or also a desktop or laptop running Linux, uh, even a variety of mobile devices such as your smartphone or tablets. As long as you can use a browser on your device that can be pointed to your Sistran Enterprise server, you should have access to translation securely and safely behind your firewall if desired, or across the World Wide Web, hosted in the cloud, the choice is yours. Okay, now let's have a look at how to translate files using the web browser interface. Start as usual by specifying the source and target languages and the translation profile. Then click this button to indicate that you wish to select one or more files to upload and translate them. You will navigate the familiar interface of your computer to select a file within a folder. You can select multiple files, in fact, for example by going back to the selection or by using other tools to select multiple files from the folder. For example, Ctrl plus click when you're using Windows. Once you have selected the file or files, you can submit them for translation one by one. In some cases, you may be asked to clarify the type of content the file contains. For example, a text file can be plain text, or it could contain tokens such as XML tags, which should not be translated. If you deal with a plain or simple text file, simply say so, and off you go. The entire content of the file will be translated shortly thereafter. You can either submit the selected files individually, one by one, or a whole bunch of them at the same time. When you return to the file translation interface, you may see that some files may already have completed their translation. Others are still in progress. Once a file is translated, you can download it, and it will usually be returned to you in the same format. A Word document will be returned as docx. An Excel spreadsheet will be returned as .xlsx. HTML pages remain in HTML format. Here is an RTF file in rich text format, which can also be opened in a variety of applications, such as LibreOffice, OpenOffice, and of course Microsoft Office. In a few rare cases, such as PDF files, where much editing and formatting is usually needed anyway, you'll find that the resulting file is coming back to you as a Word file in .docx format or as .mht, depending on how your server was configured. There is one more important thing that you can do with this translated file. You can click Edit to review each and every sentence that the file contained and that was translated. This is called post-editing. Let's quickly explore this, the post-editing side of file translation. The translation editor will display each sentence that was found in the document during its translation. By default, it uses a tabular view, line by line, similar to a spreadsheet. However, you can also choose 
a view in context, and you can scroll to corresponding parts. Left side is the source language with the original sentences, right side is the target with their translated version. The main purpose of the translation editor is, of course, to let you review the translations and make changes or corrections. This is often described as post-editing. You might find nothing wrong with the translation and simply validate it to keep it as is. Or you might find it necessary to correct a few details and make changes to the final translation. After that, you can validate it. Once you have validated your sentences, you might want to re-export the document, still in the same format, but with the newly validated changes to those sentences. You can also export the sentences by themselves as a translation memory, or a TM, using a standard TM exchange format such as TMX or a list of tab-separated lines. This lets you use the validated sentences in other computer-assisted translation tools or do other things like indexing a search engine for cross-language e-discovery. Most importantly, you may want to keep your validated sentences right here on the Sistran translation server in a newly created translation memory. Or you may want to add newly validated sentences to your existing TM. This is one way to gradually keep improving the quality of translations, especially for commonly used phrases that will appear again and again when translating new material. Such translation memories can indeed be used in your customized profiles to further enhance the quality of future translations. If the same sentence appears again and again, the translation will remain consistently the same and be done faster. In an email chain, for example, you might see the same sentences many times. So far, we have seen text translation and file translation. The third option in the list of translation tools is to translate web pages. This can be for a website, which is on the internet, or it could be on your local area network. However, that does not mean that the translation server itself needs access to the internet. Everything is initiated from your browser. If the website is on the internet, only your web browser needs to have access to the internet. The translation server does not need it. Your browser will communicate with the translation server for the translation. You can indicate the address of the website, such as a URL or an IP address, as well as the source language and the target language, and the profile as usual. Then click Translate. This will open the translation applet in a new browser tab. During the translation process, you may gradually see parts of the page change from the original language to its translated target language. It is essentially an applet designed by Sistran to seek the phrases in your currently loaded web page and translate them. The code for this applet runs in your browser. Once the translation is complete, you can toggle back and forth between original and translated sentences. The applet identifies the sentences that your browser has loaded. The code then sends these for translation to the Sistran Enterprise Translation Server. This means that the browser on your desktop needs access to the server, but the server does not need access to the Internet. You can also click and follow links in the translated page. The applet opens the linked page and translates that one too. The translation applet also includes a feedback mechanism so that your users can comment on the quality or suggest better translations. Your team can see those suggestions in the feedback server interface. They can act upon it, for example, to add a new term to a dictionary or to add a full sentence to translation memory. This web translation capability is also useful for local sites within your network, such as knowledge bases on your intranet. The entire knowledge base does not have to be pre-translated or hosted on a parallel site. Instead, the system will translate the page on demand on the fly and only when someone asks to actually see it in their desired language. 
Sometimes you will want to see a translated version of a web page, but you don't want to log in to your Sistran interface. In such cases, you might want to use a bookmarked applet, also known as bookmarklet. You can easily create bookmarklets for use in any given language pair with a specific source, in which case you can specify the desired profile too. Simply select your source and target languages and profile and drag the applet into the favorites bar. Then it will be ready for use on any page you visit.